I got one more to go, and then we're going to go into some uh, defensive technique looks. I want to take a look at Lamar Jackson. All right, Lamar Jackson, the uh, another guy who people uh, the narratives, the narratives. Oh, running back, and it—I it, mean—it's funny to say it every now and then. It is. I mean, it's an extreme compliment, in a way. Oh, for sure. That the guy's so dynamic with the ball in his hand that he's as good as any running back. For sure. Uh, I, I, as much as I like, find it funny to pile in on the jokes and see the memes and and make memes on Facebook about Lamar Jackson and his his run first mentality. I recognize how good Lamar Jackson is. I really do. Uh, he's done a lot. In my opinion, he's done a lot with a little. Yeah. I think people need to, like, you know, realize what his wide receivers over the years, okay? And and Baltimore has never, ever been good about putting wide receivers in, in for, their, for, their, uh, for their quarterbacks to help them out, right? I think you had Steve Smith there. They, they picked an aging Steve Smith up there yeah. for – I saw up, son. For Flacco. You know, try and help out Flacco. They just never really did a good job of helping out their their quarterbacks, the wide receiver game. Um, and that's an uphill battle that Lamar has to face to this day. Uh, you know, Lamar is in Greg Greg Roman's offense, which is designed for heavy, heavy run. It's it's. I'm not going to say it's predictable. I mean, but there are defenses to you know who can stop that that sort of thing. Lamar said it last year. Hey. I'm going up. The, it's not good when you're going up to the line and people are, are calling out what you're doing. Yeah, because your your offense is predictable. Lamar has to take a step, though. I acknowledge that. I'm not going to sit here and say that Lamar is this tier one elite, surefire Hall of Fame quarterback yet. I'm not. He's a very, very talented one, um, who I think has a big upside, a huge upside, still to his career. But there are a lot of things that he needs to, you know, continue to work on. Uh, but there's also things that the Ravens have to do to help him as well. And Sammy Watkins is not the answer. I'm sorry. You have to have wide receivers that are going to catch his passes. All right. Again, I, I've said it many times in the show. I'll never forget watching them play against Kansas City last year. I think it was like week two or three. Playing against Kansas City. And Lamar is hitting these dudes in the hands. He did it, against, I think, against Cleveland the second time, too. Hitting these guys in the hands, and they're dropping passes. Yeah. He's got a little bit of a rifle to him. A little bit of a rifle. It's not an excuse. No, it is. It isn't. Can't. It really isn't. If it, if you are a NFL receiver, and a ball is hitting you in the hands, you have to make that catch. He's not John Elway back there. You know no. what I mean? No, no, <laughs> he's not. You have to, you know, you have to be able to adjust, and you should know by now. You know, some of these guys have been playing in Lamar with Lamar Jackson for several years at this point. You have to know. You have to know his velocity, his touch on the ball. You got to know that. It's not an excuse. But I did want to look at a good play, though. I did want to look at a good play, something I, I really uh, I, I liked what he did. Uh, let's bring it up. Poop. All right. And what we're looking at here before we play the play, uh, Lamar and the Ravens offense is in a 12 personnel. One running back. We got two tight ends. And uh, they got a very unique look here, too. Uh, there's two tight ends on the right-hand side, which is pretty cool. Uh, we try to look up exactly what kind of scheme, what kind of formation this is. Lamar is in the shotgun. We're looking at deuce trips. I think, you know, you because at, at one point, at the beginning of this play, there is two tight ends and a wide receiver. And I don't think that the two tight ends being on the right side uh, affects the the name of the play, the name of the scheme. I don't think that affects anything like that. But the wide receiver does go in motion. He goes to go in motion to the left-hand side. And uh, so, yeah, we have two tight ends on the right and a two wide receivers. Uh, fin Once the play gets going, two wide receivers on the left-hand side. Uh, they're playing the Chargers. This is from week 15 or 16 of the 2018 season. I know this because the Chargers have a good record. They were neck and neck with Kansas City to win the AFC West division. They were some really good stuff and this game definitely didn't hurt their case or didn't help their case at all. But the Chargers are looking at a uh, some type of dime scheme or d dime formation. 
uh, with a like a zone coverage, but it's some kind of weird hybrid thing that we have going on. Yeah, it's not your standard cover two, cover three, cover four. It they're they're using one of those um, multiple zone coverages, um, and and they're gonna bring just the four down linemen, um, and then every other player that I can see in the field is uh, some sort of secondary player. Yeah. So yeah, just about. So for our for our audio listeners, yeah, there's four people on the. Uh, well, there's technically like six people on the front. Um, there's six people on the right on the line. Uh, you got a corner on one side. You got a corner on both sides. You got three line like three linebackers, and then what do we say? There's one. There's at least one safety back there, right? Let me do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. So there's a safety in the back somewhere. All right, but it's a very, very unique look. There's a little bit more advanced than, than we anything we've seen. Hopefully, we can look back on this episode a couple episodes, a couple months, a couple years down the road, and yeah, you know, have it figured out. But um, but yeah, so this is what they're approaching with. It's a very stacked. Uh, uh the the box. I would say that the, the box is pretty stacked. They're always looking out. They know what Lamar is because remember this is 2018 too, and this is the offense that is made for Joe Flacco. I don't yeah. even know if this is Greg Roman yet. It, um, I yeah, really don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think Roman was on the staff, and maybe he hadn't been elevated yet. It's possible because again, it, uh, Lamar came in when Flacco hurt his back. He played the last six or seven regular season games. Mm-hmm. So, but right now, all Lamar has really shown that he could do. He's shown that he could run a lot. You know, he he could pass. He could certainly pass every now and then, but. This is very, very heavy. Lamar running, and the whole offense had to like readjust, like how what the, how they were, you know, approaching this thing. But um, so let's uh, let's let's play this clip. Fake handoff. Dime. That was a dime. Dime. Yeah, didn't didn't have to break stride at all, right right in the bucket. No, it was really good. <laughs> We've probably watched this play because we took a while to try and figure out the Chargers, um, and the you know the Ravens offense too. But you know we watched it like five or six times before you started recording and I'm still not sure who blows the coverage there. Who's who is I most, think it's very similar to that Browns play. Who is most to blame for Mark Andrews able to catch that pass? Right. Yeah, that is that is the question. Because right now, um lined up on the left hash mark if you're looking uh, to your left. <laughs> if you're looking the same way that Lamar is, is the way I'll put this. Uh, on the left hash mark, you have number 31, who's probably some sort of safety. Yeah. This is this is once again. It's a it's they brought in a hybrid, um, multiple secondary players. Like brought in like you know four guys, five guys, or whatever. And he takes off running straight back at pretty much immediately at the snap, and. He ends up in trail to Mark Andrews, and then you do have the safety over top. So I don't think 31's to blame, but at the same time, the safety stayed over top of Mark Andrews, so he kind of did his job too. Right. So this might be one of those times where it's just a better offensive play. It's a yeah. better pass. And it's Mark better... Andrews was a top-end tight end. You know, but he was a top three or four tight end this year. Freaky athlete. Freaky athlete. Very, very good. So, all right. So let's start to break this thing down. The, the guy's 6'3", 250 pounds, <laughs> and can run like a 4'5", something 40. Yeah, he's he's pretty good at what he does. He's pretty good at what he does. All right. So as we said, uh, Lamar is in shotgun. We have one of the wide receivers uh, going from the right side to the left side in motion. He stops. I don't think he's allowed to be on the line. I think they have too many people right on the line. He stops. Uh, the The line of scrimmage is, what is that, 31, 32. He think he stops right around the 30, no, oh, 29 yard line, and he plants himself. Lamar takes the ball, and I do want to show this too. For some reason, we couldn't figure this out. Our left guard here, number 74. I don't. For those who uh, are watching at home, our left guard pulls, 
and I'm not sure why. Because Joey Bosa, right? Or is it Nick? No, this is Joey. Joey. Joey Bosa is uh, has this one person on him, and Melvin Ingram is on the outside. And I believe this is Bosa's rookie year, I think. Yeah, that would be Ronnie Stanley, I think, on the left. There. Okay. Is that Ronnie Stanley one-on-one with Bosa, or yeah. is that him? Yep. Okay. All right, they go for the fake handoff, and I'm actually surprised. The Chargers defense really doesn't buy this. They really don't, like, you don't see anybody come, like, run forward, run to that side. They're, the linebackers to the cornerbacks, they're playing it back pretty pretty safe. They're playing it back pretty safe. And we'll, we'll just show that again for our video watchers. Yeah, watch 31 here. He's just going to bail. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody came forward. Nobody shot forward. Nobody broke the line of scrimmage, which is weird. Uh, but but actually very I think very smart on the Chargers defensive side of things that they didn't really fall for this. Um not that it mattered anyways. So they're double team and Melvin Ingram on the outside. Lamar has I think I kind of roughly three and a half, nearly four seconds of time to make a decision here. He's got a pretty decent pocket. And honestly, if Lamar wants to take off here, he could take a shot straight. He could probably go and maybe get a first down. He's he's got a he's got a pretty wide open running lane uh, if he wants to escape out of the left hand side. But his weak is his, you know, his left side, his back side is you know, there's nobody over there. He's he's in a good spot right now. All right, somebody's getting through, and Lamar at the right moment releases this thing, and bam. Hits Mark Andrews uh, again. A dime. Done. There is no change in motion, no change of speed, no readjustment. And I think it's really good. I think it's prolific because it shows what Lamar Jackson can do here. All right? Lamar Jackson, We all, like I said, everybody loves to criticize him. Not the best passer. He trusted Mark Andrews that much in some kind of weird zone coverage where Mark Andrews has technically, I mean, two people – Really, really close to him, within two yards on either side. And there's also another defender on there, very, very close. So, we, I mean, I wouldn't call it triple coverage, but the way that this play unfolds, it's Mark Andrews catching a pass with three people within, I think, each within five yards of him. Yeah. And I think it's 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 really, really significant that he does this, and I wish he could do this more because people know that he's a running back threat and, you know, it's it's big when he throws. They know he's the running, the rushing threat, the dual threat quarterback. But I want to see more, you know, threatening with him making passes like this. Uh, and we need wide receiver help for him. But this is why I wanted to showcase this play. So Andrews gets it, and there's nobody in front of him. There's nobody in front of him. Looks like the safety committed a little bit too, uh, too early, too soon, and completely missed how this. Uh, uh, and completely came in front of Andrews, and Andrews just had a whole, whole field to go. Yeah. Yeah, he can't lead them too much, because then that safety that's over top will be able to take care of him, no problem. Uh, he can't, you know, underthrow it because then 31's probably going to be able to make a play on the ball, and knock it away. So it's it's got to be a, just a perfect throw, or else it just it doesn't work. Right. No, it's great. So we're gonna watch it one more time. All right, I think we broke it down pretty good there. Shotgun. We call it sh uh, deuce trips. Trips on the right. And uh, our wide receiver motion to the left side. Running back right next to him. I can't tell who that is. Who is Gus Edwards, I think. I think you might be right. I think you might be right. Um, clean pocket. Left guard pulls. Gives enough time to get Melvin Ingram out of there. And bam. Right on the money. Mark Andrews to the house. Yeah, it was Willie Sneed that went in motion. That was, okay. Yeah. yeah. He attacked that well, man. He went right in between everybody, hit the seams just the right way, and that's all That's all just really, really good timing on Lamar's part, Lamar and Andrews. So, um, so there it is. That is our Lamar Jackson play. Just wanted to spotlight him, put him over a little bit. Talk them up. Again, it's so easy to criticize. It's so easy to criticize when you're, you know, uh, you, you're sitting down on the couch or watching these athletes on TV or in the stands. 
And I, you know, it is the jokes are funny every now and then, but I do still want to um, take this mature approach to all this, this reasonable approach when we're talking about some of these athletes. Three nineteen, three nineteen, hut. Three three. Yeah, spot. Look at the eight. Look for Jeff. 